three things very quickly. The first thing is creating an expectation. Do you expect him to move? Maybe we know Jesus can heal. We all know that Jesus can heal. But would you have an expectation to say, I believe he will heal me today. Like the woman with the issue of blood. She came expecting him, expecting that miracle to flow. She came with such an expectation because when faith is there, it generates that expectancy. When the promise is there, then we have that expectancy. She came and, you know, there were many people touching him. But there was one touch that released the power of God. And that was a touch of faith, a touch of expectation. So number one is when you pray for someone, have an expectancy. When Jesus went through many places, people brought their sick. Why? That was not the good thing to do or the right thing to do. There was an expectancy. And people got healed because of that. Do you expect God to move or do you pray because that's a good thing. That's a nice thing to do. When we pray, do we pray with such expectancy? I quoted Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, you know, without faith it is impossible to please God. And he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Do we believe that? That each time you pray at home, each time you come to church, each time you get together and intercede, that he is the rewarder as you diligently seek him. Wow, what a promise that is. That there's a reward that gets released from heaven when you come to him in faith. See, our faith in Christ creates that expectancy and it releases the power of God. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So can you see that, you know, what God does in you, you don't keep it inside the church. You take it outside. You take it out of the sanctuary. You take it to the world. Jesus said, go. He didn't say, go into the synagogue. He didn't say, go into the temple. But he said, go into all the world, wherever you are. And he who, now notice this again, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. That's talking about salvation. Look at this. And these signs will follow whom? Those who believe in my name. When we pray for the sick, when we cast out demons, whatever we do in the name of Jesus, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Let me just pause there. See, no one drinks poison by intention, <laughs> right? And you know, this is revealed to me a couple of months ago. But sometimes even the medicines that we take can become poisonous within us. We take it for one symptom, but there can be a reaction. And, you know, we don't manipulate the word of God, but this verse can also mean that you pray for yourself against side effects. Have you ever tried to read those little finer points on, you know, the instructions? Oh my gosh, you'll never take any meds again because they say this can, this can, this all can happen. But here's the thing. You start laying hands on yourself and start praying. Say, God, I believe your word that this will not be deadly to my body. And you begin to pray every day and you see the miracle of God. We have a gentleman in our church, stage four cancer. Usually stage four cancer, the next stage is that, you know, they pass away. And when he was asked to go through his treatment, the medical knowledge uh, was he's going to have this, 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 and you know, all these side effects. And I shared this verse with him and we we were praying for him and I said, you begin to pray against every side effect. And he began to do that. His latest report was that his PSA counts had literally dropped and the cancer is going the other way. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, God's word is true. When I learned this, I was like, wow, yes. Because anything that we take in and if it becomes poison inside, we can pray against that, right? So it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and what happens? They will recover. Now that word recover is not an instant healing. This word in, in the grave is not an instant healing. It's the process of healing that gets expedited because you have laid hands on someone who's sick. Wow, but you must believe. Number two is the laying on of hands. See, when we, when we read the Old Testament, we see, you know, the blessing of a father coming to a son. We see even the sins of a nation, you know, being transferred through the laying on of hands. In the New Testament, Jesus said, they will lay hands on the sick. So when we lay hands on the sick, that is an impartation of the power of God that happens. So that God touches somebody through you. Where is the power? Within us. So when you lay hands, that power gets released. But you must believe that when you lay hands, that the power of God is going to flow through you by the power of the Holy Spirit, the laying on of hands. And in the New Testament, we see even when eldership, when leaders are appointed, there's a laying on of hands because there's an impartation of the Spirit 
that begins to happen. When we pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we lay hands on people. We don't do gimmicks, but we lay hands on the people and we remain very biblical. Amen? You know, it's, it's sad because the New Testament church is about community. It's about us. It's not about this superstar who's up there. That's not biblical Christianity. Biblical Christianity is the making of disciples and those disciples making other disciples. When the Holy Spirit was poured upon the church, Acts chapter 2, the church remained in Jerusalem for nine years. And then what happens is that there is persecution and the believers are spread all over. But what did they do? Acts chapter 8, wherever they went, they healed the sick, they cast demons out, they preached the gospel and they built house churches. So, you know, biblical Christianity is about each one of you being used for the kingdom of God. In the New Testament, Paul himself talks about these super apostles. But what was happening was that he was saying, look, this is not what Christianity is. You know, here's a question I wanted to ask yourself. Do you believe the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is upon you? Be real. Do you believe the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you? Or do you doubt it? If you doubt it, ask the Lord to help you to believe. Because he's faithful to his word. And number three is really speaking out the authority of the word of God. Where you speak the word of God. When you pray for somebody, you speak God's word over that person. You know? like Psalm 103 says, you know, bless the Lord, O my soul, and but forget not his benefits. He who heals all your diseases. So when we take the word of God, we begin to speak the word of God because there's life in the word of God. And you begin to pray by the stripes of Jesus. I pray you will be healed right now. But you have to believe. You have to have that authority. You have to believe and you release that word. See, Isaiah 55 says, you know, God says, you know, whatever word he releases will always complete its very purpose. Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You know, do research on healing scriptures. Have a resource base. Memorize the scripture. You know, meditate on that so that you remember the Holy Spirit then reminds you, oh, you can see, you can use this scripture. You can speak this scripture out and you will see miracles happen. So, you know, that's my encouragement to you this morning is that God wants to use you. God wants to move through his church because here's the reality. If God doesn't move through his church, through whom is he going to work through? So we are his representatives. We are the ones who bring transformation. We are the ones whom God will use to touch others around us. I was thinking, and if I truly love people around me, I will bring the kingdom of God to them. If I truly love my neighbors, I will bring the kingdom of God. To them. I know sometimes, you know, it's scary, but as you begin to pray for them regularly, as you begin to pray, God, give me an opportunity. God is going to open doors. They are going to come and talk to you and say, you know what, I'm going through this right now. And at that moment, you don't say, come with me to church. That is the wrong thing. You bring them eventually. But at that moment, you are the person whom God has placed to be a blessing to that individual. Revival is for the church because revival is reviving what's kind of dead and, you know, dried up. Evangelism is for the world. But sometimes what happens is we, we kind of swap those and we think evangelism happens inside the church. Jesus said, go. We go, we help them to come to Jesus and then bring them to get discipled. And it's a mistake that we all do. Expecting, you know, when you have an evangelistic service in church, how many new people turn up? Very, very minimal. But that is where God wants us to go. And that's how this nation is going to change. That's how this nation is going to get transformed through you. Because when you pray for your nation, you become the answer in your little way. And he will use you.